Good morning, church. It's good to see everyone. I am thrilled that uh, so many folks that were able to make it today with this uh, unbelievable weather. It's just unbelievable out there, and we just need to keep lifting up folks as they're uh, traveling on these highways to pray for them and just pray for God's safety. Amen, church? We're going to go ahead and continue and sing a couple more songs of praise and worship, and if you're able, would you stand with us as we, uh, as we praise our God? Stay. 
Before we sit down, church, how about if we just turn and just say hey to somebody here this morning? Hey, everybody, I'm Len, and I am the worship leader here at the branch. You caught me in a, a little bit of a practice time here. But as you can see, I'm all by myself. I really enjoy it. You know, coming up with the chords and coming up with the words to these songs. But um, we're missing something. And what we're going to do here is try to reach out to each and every one of you. We have, uh, we have a lot of uh, positions or openings here, if you will, on the worship team. If you're interested in playing the acoustic guitar, the electric guitar, the bass, the keyboard, or the drums, if you like to sing, if you're a vocalist and would like to use that gift that God gave to you, come up after the worship service on Sunday and talk with me. Because if there's one thing that's missing up here in all this, it's you. Church coming out of the, the branch. It's going to be called Hope Community Church. And it's going to be up at the top of Harvey Road. But before we go there, we need to build this ministry team. We need to fill these positions, these, uh, the acoustic guitar, the bass, the electric. We want to build a brand new team. If you can give a week, every other week. Every three weeks, maybe once a month, towards this team and make that commitment to reach out from the Claymont community and beyond to, to spread this gospel message of Jesus Christ to our brothers and sisters 
out in this hurting community. Think about it and pray about it. God bless. From the corner of the Delaware To the San Francisco Bay All your people, they are singing Listen, Lord, to what they say May the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be pleasing unto you, O oh God. Amen. Hey, everybody. Well, that was our commercial. Now, that was about, that was about a year ago, and that's when uh, Hope was coming on board, and we were ramping up, and we, um, Samantha... Uh, the uh, the Fisher girls went over there. They uh, they built themselves just a wonderful team, and they uh, they just have an, an awesome worship team over there. And as you can tell, we're a little sparse now, but we're trying to rebuild. We're trying to just uh, uh, ramp up and um, and get ready. And you know what we're getting ready for? I was talking to Pastor John, and I think he'll give me permission. Out back here, there's a some pretty big buildings going on. There's a, there's going to be a lot of families that are going to move into that uh, that place over there. And I believe they're only about 30 or 40 yards from this church. And one day, and I think that day is coming pretty soon, folks are going to start moving in. And we're going to have a lot of guests that are going to come into this place. And my hope and prayer is that we'll, you know, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for the guests. We'll be ready in this room. We'll be, we'll be fixing things up. We'll have the chairs set up. We'll have um, just everything and everybody in place. And, and God knows if, if you're looking for a place to serve, if you want a place to get connected, do it now before the crowd gets here. Amen, church? Amen, Amen because it's going to happen soon. And again, if you, if you enjoy the music, if you want to join us uh, with some praise and worship songs, you know, come on up and just talk to any one of us. But um, it's not much of a commitment. It's a Monday night we practice, and then uh, Sunday morning, of course, we, we have a little bit of a practice time, and then we just praise and worship God in this place. Thank you. I want to greet all of you that are here today in this icy, rainy morning. We had a, one of our members was coming at 9 o'clock, and she was involved in an accident. We want to think of people that didn't get here. Uh, at 9 o'clock, um, it was sparse. Uh, there's a lot of people here at this service, and I want to thank you for coming out and braving the elements to be here this morning. So I thank you for that. We had a really busy day here yesterday, and when I was walking this morning, I was thinking about that, and I said, yesterday was yesterday. Today's a new day. Yeah. And um, I was talking to somebody this morning, and I said, man, it's rough out there. It's, it's rainy. It's icy. And then she said back to me, yes, but you always say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I said, yes, you're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. So we got to be careful when we come and go today. And we just thank God that we're all here now and we'll have a safe trip back. We have Alpha coming up again on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. It goes from 6 to 8 o'clock. We start on time. We finish on time. We have a meal at 6 o'clock. And if you say, well, Pastor John, I can't get here at 6. Can I get here a little bit later? You can get here between 6.30 and quarter of 7 and still get in time for the meeting itself. The, the, the dinner is from, from 6 to 6.30 or to quarter of 7. So think about that. It's, it's Wednesday nights and, and it's been very rewarding. It has been excellent worship here. On Saturday morning from 10 to 11.30, we have the alternative healing. This will be the third week for that. If you have any questions about that, Mary Richards is sitting right back there. Just put your hand up, Mary. If you have any questions, they can see you afterwards. And that's been going well, and we thank Mary for her leadership there and for all that's happening with that. And then on February the 1st, it's a Sunday, we have a, a, um, a soup sale, like the Super Bowl sale, I think it is, the idea. So if you want to make soup, there's a sign-up sheet downstairs. At the Welcome Center, that's the desk that when you walk down the steps there, you just go straight ahead and you'll see it. And there's a sign-up sheet. You can make soup. Uh, there's people. We have containers for you. And you can make as much soup as you want. And then uh, for those that, of us that don't buy soup or, or appreciate somebody else's soup that they have, we um, buy it. So you can 
it's a double win for the church. You can make it, and you can buy it, and eat it. It's all good stuff. Downstairs in the Welcome Center, you'll find some quilts down there hanging on the wall, and they're called prayer quilts. We make those for people that are sick or in the hospital or whatever, and you'll see strings on there, and, and you tie that string, you pray for the person, and then we present that quilt to the individual that uh, whomever it's for, and it gives you a little background of, of who it's for. So consider doing that when you walk down the steps. We're going to be receiving the offering now, and I'm going to have a prayer, and the band is going to pray, and we're going to go on. Father, I thank you for this day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, I know from your word that each day is a new day of mercies. You also say you'll never let us down. You'll never um, leave us in a bad place, but you'll deliver us. And I thank you for that word, O oh God, that you are true. I pray, Lord, for this offering now that you would bless it, that you would multiply this offering, O oh God, so that we can bring more into the kingdom. As Len said about Darley Green next door, we want to do our very best here at this church to um, uh, support one another. We want to do the very best in this congregation to invite others here so that they can hear the word and that they can be, become part of this fellowship. So bless this offering, O oh God, and I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.
Today's scripture comes from the book of um, Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 through 13. And this is Jesus talking. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. I was at our bishop's retreat last, uh, this past week for like three days, and People had asked me how I liked it, and I said, I just remembered this is streaming live right now. <laughs> but anyhow, I said, I said, I liked the day two and three. Day one, I wasn't really, really getting into it, but I did end up really liking it. I ended up being blessed. And there's just things that are done there and said there that it, it takes me out of my comfort zone. I, I do have a zone, and it's sometimes pretty tight, and... When we were singing Old MacDonald, I had, you know, I was thinking, Old MacDonald, why am I singing Old MacDonald? And, and, and then one day we were doing the Hokey Pokey, and I thought the only reason I'm doing the Hokey Pokey is because my mother loved to do the Hokey Pokey dance, and I'll do it. And as I was doing it, I was saying, Mom, I'm doing this in your honor. I'm doing this in memory of you, Mom, because I would not be doing it. So not everything that happened there I did enjoy. But the one of the things that they did do when we were there is they opened up the mic to anybody that would like to say something about their congregation or about something good that's going on in their life. Well, I can talk for a whole day about the things that are going good here at Atonement Church. Yesterday was an exceptional day. We had a meeting here upstairs from 10 o'clock to 11.30 about alternative medicine, and that's going to be going on again this coming week and and it's it's very well received we had holy spirit saturday where Dwayne hendrickson was here and and there was 35 40 people over in the choir room and we were talking about the holy spirit and how the holy spirit works in our lives and the gifts of the holy spirit and and then last night we had uh heavenly perks cafe and there was uh, as many people there last night as there is here today we had a wonderful evening so things at the church were really exciting and i can talk about that but I did get up and I did say to the people, and there were several hundred people there, that in, um, it might have been October or November, the Lord had placed on my heart to have something special as a gift for people that attend AA meetings here at this church. We might have as high as 70 or to 100 people a week coming here to three different meetings for AA, and I, and I, and I was impressed upon my heart to give them a Christmas gift and I wasn't sure how to do it I wasn't even sure what to buy what would I buy all those people and the Lord laid on my heart that that I should buy Bibles for people that go to AA because there's a Bible it's called the New Living Translation which we use here Pastor Amy and I both use the New Living Translation but this Bible is called a recovery Bible 
So as you're reading along in this recovery Bible, and there's things in there along the side notes, along the bottom notes, and, and when you have that, it has to do with recovery. So I told the people down there how much the, the people like that, that we bought the Bibles. A couple of ladies from the congregation wrapped the Bibles for me. They wrapped 100 Bibles. And uh, I raised, on, in two Sundays, I raised $2,400 just by sharing with the community here that we would like to do that. We handed the Bibles out, and the people were touched with them. Some cried, and, and some applauded, and, and, and different reactions was going on. And, and last Monday night, Amy and I went up to uh, AA meetings. We come up to the meetings. We say hello. We hang out for a while, and then we go back down to the meeting that we were here for. There's a young man that I met. When I say young, I'm going to be 70 this year. So if a man is in his 40s or 50s, he's a young man to me. And this young man, was said he's getting his life together. And what that meant was that he was 69 days free. 69 days. And he was excited about that. And he said something else. He said, I now live in a shelter. He was excited about having a place to live. A shelter. And he said, and he got new glasses. He was excited about the glasses. And, and he says, I'm getting my teeth worked on. I'm happy about that. And, and he says, and now I have a Bible that I can read. He says, I never read the Bible before. He said, it was difficult to read it when I look at it. But I can understand the New Living Translation. And he said, they have all the notes along the side of that. And he said, I'm thrilled now. I have all these good things going on in my life. And praise God. And this is the deal. This is what happens. I get credit for this. And I have nothing in it except I made an announcement saying, can you give me your money? And you gave me your money. And I bought the Bibles. And I get credit for it. I have nothing in it. Praise God. Praise Jesus. And then afterwards, people came up to me and said, that's really cool, the testimony that you gave. Of course, I broke down and cried right in the middle of it. But... but um, that's just that. But anyhow, I do appreciate this congregation so much for all the work that you do, for all the hard work that you do in a week's time and a year's time. But today we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. It's a two-week series. So at a certain point, I already have the second, the second message already written, but we're only going to go to a certain point and, um, and today. But today we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. Some call this the Disciples' Prayer. And it was a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. That's how the Lord's Prayer came about. They asked Jesus, can you teach us to pray? And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But can you teach us to pray? And it's called the Lord's Prayer. But it was disciples asking. So it's like the disciples' prayer. And that's why sometimes people do that. But when I was a young man in the church, and now I'm really young because I was 28 years old, and I'm going to talk about my mom in a minute. So if I'm 28 years old, that meant that my mom was 58 years old. And so when I'm talking about this, you'll sort of get the idea of, of our ages with this. But I was in the church. I became active in the church. And in those days, we had what we called a Sunday school superintendent. And what that person did, it was a person that got before the group of several hundred people. And they would gather together. You'd have prayer. You'd have Bible reading. You'd have the Lord's Prayer. You would have an opening for about 15 minutes. And then you would excuse the people, and they would leave and go to their classrooms. And in those days, we had hundreds of people going to Sunday school as adults. So it was a pretty cool time. And, and for me to do that, I was happy to do it. I never did anything in the church like that before. And, um, and, and I was nervous about doing it. But I was excited about doing it as well. So that morning I got up the first day there and, and I got dressed. I didn't want to be late. I wanted to make sure I didn't have a flat tire on the way, five or six miles to drive. I wanted to make sure that everything went okay. I wanted to make sure that I got to the church. And I got there, but I got there about an hour early. So I decided to go to visit my mom and my dad. So I went over to they lived in town, the town that I was at, and, and, and uh, I went to my mom and dad, and I said, I just want to hang out here for a little bit until I need to go up to the church, and they said, sure, come on in, so I said to my mom, we were in this kitchen, and it was a big kitchen, it was like a farmhouse kitchen, it was really nice, it had a fireplace in it, and it was really a nice deal, and uh, I said to my mom, I said, hey, mom, I, I told her what I'm going to be doing, I said, how do I look, you know, uh, 
Things don't change because I still say that. How do I look? And she said, well, honey, she said, you look, you look pretty good. She said, but your shoes aren't polished. She said, your shoes are scuffed. So she said, here's what I want you to do. She says, I want you to stand on this stool. And I stood on the stool, and she went, and she got a cloth, polishing cloth, and shoe polish. And she got down on her hands and knees in front of me, and she polished my shoes. Yeah. And, so, and I let her. And um, some of you are saying, whoa. But my mom did that kind of thing. And she had seven kids. And, and, and pretty much we all felt like we were the only child. Uh, she, she did those things. Now, she was strict in some areas. And she made us work in things. But in certain areas, she was like that. More so, I think, when we became adults than when we were children and training us and grooming us and things. But anyhow, uh, she polished my shoes up and, and had me looking good from head to toe. And, and, and I was getting ready to walk out the door. And she said, honey, she said, I'd like to come to church today. They went to another church the other end of town. She said, I'd like your daddy and I to come to the church and see, uh, hear you speak and hear you before the people. I'd like to come out and do that. And I said, mom, that I would really love that. I said, but uh, that made me nervous. It made me more nervous, but she said she wants to come. And I said, okay, mom. She said, now, I want to tell you something, though. She said, when you do the Lord's Prayer, when you introduce the Lord's Prayer, she said, I don't want you to say we are now going to recite the Lord's Prayer. She said, I want you to say we're now going to pray the Lord's Prayer. So I'm driving now to the church. I, I pray the Lord's Prayer. I don't recite the Lord's Prayer. I don't recite the Lord's Prayer. I pray the Lord's Prayer. I pray the Lord's Prayer. I don't recite the Lord's Prayer. I got a lot on my mind, and I'm nervous about it anyhow. So I got to the church, and I went up, and I began to have this opening up, and I went through all of this, and I said, now we're going to recite the Lord's Prayer. And my mom was sitting right out in the middle, and she looked at me, and I looked at her. She never said a word to me about it afterward because... I could tell by her look, that's all I needed to have that look, and I never made that mistake again. But here's what I learned from that. I learned a couple of lessons, really. One is that when you're before people, make sure that your shoes are polished. That was one thing I learned. And the other is that we pray the Lord's Prayer. We don't recite the Lord's Prayer. That's how I learned that. Because many times I think we recite the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we recite Psalms 23. We're going to be having a series of sermons in February on Psalms 23, and I want you to come out for that. But we don't recite the Lord's Prayer. We pray the Lord's Prayer. After all, we're praying to God Almighty. We're praying to the creator of the heavens and the earth. We're creating by, we're, we were created by God. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Jesus has lessons for us too, doesn't he? He has lessons in our lesson today. Jesus said in our lesson, when you pray... Do not pray like hypocrites do. Now, I don't know what your definition of a hypocrite would be. Uh, if we passed a piece of paper through here, each person would probably have a different answer. Some of you might have something like a hypocrite would be a person that says one thing, preaches one thing, but then does another thing. Something in that area, something in that idea, something in that thought. Uh, sometimes we might say that, that that person speaks out of both sides of their mouth. That would be a hypocrite that speaks out of both sides of your mouth. We've heard expressions like that. But in the Bible times, in Jesus' time, when you talked about a hypocrite, you weren't talking about a person like we think of as a hypocrite. What you were talking about was an actor. You were talking about a person that would take, play, take part in a play or in a drama, and, and they were called hypocrites, and here's why. When a person in the Bible times was an actor, they didn't have actresses. If there was a woman part, the man would wear a woman's mask. If there would be a part in, this, in the play where it was an older man and it was a younger man playing that part, that actor or hypocrite would wear a mask. So Jesus was saying, don't wear a mask. Be real in life. When you go to pray, be real about it. Don't, don't be um, uh, play acting. Don't hide your real identity. Uh, uh, don't do that, Jesus was saying. That's what he was referring to when he was talking about the hypocrites. 
When I was in the, in the 1980s, late in the 1980s, there was a movie by the name of Mask. Not The Mask, but it was called Mask. Cher was the star of that movie. And it was about a young man that had a disease. I can't pronounce the name of the disease. It's so long, uh, and, and I just can't pronounce it. I tried to pronounce it, but I can't. And he had this disease that he became um, distorted. His appearance became distorted. So his family had a mask made for him, and he would wear the mask. And kids would make fun of him. Uh, different people would laugh at him. They'd, they'd call him names, talking about him wearing a mask, talking about being disfigured, just really picked on him and bullied him. And, and in the movie, there's a scene. They were coming off of a school bus, as I recall, and they were coming off of the school bus. Um, there was a nice-looking young man, a popular young man, uh, was poking fun at the man, the young fellow that had worn the mask. And this popular young guy, this handsome young guy, said to this young uh, person that had his face distorted and wore the mask, he said, hey, why don't you take that mask off so we can really see who you are? And the young guy with the mask on said back to him, why don't you take your mask off and let us see who you really are? So you see, that's what Jesus is talking about today. People are walking around in the church, out of the church, wearing masks, hiding our identity, play acting. When Jesus says we as disciples of Jesus Christ are to be real, we're to, not to be play acting, not to wear masks, but be really real. And that's the job that we do that all day long. We, we, we try and, and we work hard on trying to be the person, the individual that Jesus would have us to be. Jesus said further, when you pray, go to your closet and pray. Shut the door of your closet and be alone and go in there and pray. You see, a prayer closet is a private area. It's when we're just with God. It's just us and God. There's nobody else around. And I find it takes faith to pray because we're praying. Jesus said, God is unseen. So we're praying, faith believing that somebody is hearing what we're saying and we're going to see the results. That's what faith is. Faith is believing before you see it happening. So we go, Jesus said, go into your prayer closet. Go away. Now, we can really pray anywhere, can't we? Uh, I know there's people driving here today that was praying about that. Sure, you can pray when you're driving. You can pray when you're walking. You can pray any time at all. Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 11, rather, Luke said, when, when we read how when Jesus was playing in different places, people were watching them. Uh, they were watching Jesus praying. The disciples were watching him, and they wanted to know how to pray as John the Baptist prayed. As John the Baptist taught his disciples, they said, teach us how to pray that same way. Luke wrote, when you pray... He was talking to disciples. That's why we call this sometimes the disciple prayer. We can pray anywhere. We pray in public here. I prayed in public here. We prayed in public at 9 o'clock. We do that often. We pray at meal times. We pray at open meetings here in the church. Before we have meetings, congregation, we get together, we have prayer. Uh, we have certain people here in the congregation that are chaplains in service organizations or in the Boy Scouts, and they open up with prayer. When I was in Snow Hill, Maryland, as a pastor down there, I was, not just me, but pastors were invited to come out and pray uh, before the town council met. That was really cool to do that. So, so we had these experiences that we, that we do pray. You might not believe this, but I'm going to tell you anyhow. When I was in school, we prayed. Yeah. I remember we, we would have, in our classroom, we had Bibles. We prayed. We did those things. Those were way back in the olden days. But Jesus said, when you pray, don't be like the pagans are. And a pagan is defined as a person that worships false gods. Jesus said, all they do is they babble. They just say words. They're really not praying. Jesus said, don't be like them. Uh, Jesus said, don't be like them because your father Here's what you're saying. God knows what we're saying. God knows the things that are happening in our lives. James tells us that we have not because we 
ask not. Early on in the, ch in the church, again, I'm 28 years old, 27, 28 years old, I was part of the youth group as a leader. And one of, there was three couples, and, and, and this one, one guy was a truck driver. Now, he was in New York delivering something, and he was going to go, say, to Washington, D.C. at night. And his boss wanted him to drive from New York through Pennsylvania into Washington, D.C. to make the delivery. Well, his family, he had a wife and two children, lived in Pennsylvania. And he thought it would be really cool if he could stop in the middle of the night and see his family. So he said, in prayer, he said, God, could you make that available for me that I could stop and see my family in the middle of this drive? And he said he hadn't heard back from God. He didn't really know what he should do. So he said, okay, God, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll flip a coin. And if it comes up heads, I know that I'm supposed to stop and be with my family. So he flipped the coin, and it came up tails. So he said, God, would you reconsider your answer? <laughs> and he flipped the coin again, and it came up heads. He said, thank you, God. I'm going to stop with my family. See, that's wrong. That's just wrong. You don't pray like that. God doesn't give answers at the flip of a coin. And if the flip of the coin doesn't come up our way, we say, let's flip the coin again. Let's do this one out of three, three out of five. What are we going to do? God doesn't operate like that. That's not God's way. See, this man wanted an answer. He wanted his answer his way. And he was going to be determined to do what he wanted to do. But we can pray at any time. When I walk early in the morning, that's my prayer time. People know that I walk early in the morning by this time, and I walk in any kind of weather. Um, I was walking, and there was a woman that, that, um, that I used to see walking. I haven't seen her for a while, and she's older than I am. She might have trouble getting around. But anyhow, I used to see her, and we would exchange hellos. It's a nice day. It's not a nice day. It's a rainy day. It's a sunny day, whatever it is. And and uh, I was walking along, and, and she said to me, she knew that I, that I walked in most kind of weather, and she said, this was during Hurricane Sandy. She said, did you walk during the hurricane? And I said, yes, I did walk during the hurricane. And she said back to me, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> that was her answer. She said, you're an idiot. Now, is that any way to talk to a preacher? I don't think so. She knew I was a preacher, too. Well, it's really not any way to talk to anybody, is it? But the point is that we can pray anywhere, anytime, in any place. It is good to go into the closet. We have a prayer room here in this church. I'll bet a lot of you don't know that. We have a room on this floor. When you walk out that door, you turn right on the left-hand side. There's a prayer room there. And it's a nice prayer room. It's right next door to our exercise room that's now heated. Did you know that we have a heated exercise room? And there's nice equipment in there that people in the church gave it to us. So you can go in there and exercise. You can go over and, and pray. You can do whatever you want to. One day I was in my office and somebody rang the doorbell. I went out to see who it was. I was the only one here. And there was two ladies. It looked to me like a mother and a daughter. And they said, could we come in and use your prayer room? I didn't even know who they were. And I said, sure. I took them up, and they knew about the prayer room, so they went in there, and they prayed. I remember that um, uh, our bishop, when we turned from 1999, that was Peter Weaver, from 1999 to 2000, there was a lot of fear. Remember that? Fear that computers wouldn't, like airplane computers wouldn't be working. And there was a name for that. It was Y2K. Yeah. Yes, Y2K. I remember when I went to bed that night, I woke up the next morning. The very first thing I did was I ran downstairs to see if my computer still worked. And it did. But he prayed all night. He was in the office all night praying about Y2K. That's what he did. But, but, but we pray for things. I, I remember reading in the Bible one day about this man that, that uh, uh, was what Jesus was talking about. They were called publicans. 
and he was not a Republican, a publican. He was talking about praying, and they said that this one man went to in prayer, and they were standing in the temple praying. And the one man was standing there, and, and, and he was, this was his prayer. He said, Lord, Lord God, I thank you that I'm not a Gentile. That's you. Thank God I'm not a Gentile, and I thank God that I'm not a woman. Those were his two prayers. Across from him in the temple, the other side of the altar, another man was praying. And he cried out to God, I'm a sinner. I need, I need you, God. I'm a sinner. And he started to beat on his chest. Jesus said, you see those two men? This guy over here, his prayers didn't get outside of the temple. Or this guy over here, he left this place today justified. He left this place made right. You see, God in the Bible tells us that man judges by appearance. Man judges by appearance, but God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. So we have these things going on in, in, in our lives, in our prayer in our prayers. But when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we'll have a certain attitude. And the attitude, as my mother would say, don't recite the Lord's Prayer. You pray the Lord's Prayer. Because our attitude is that we're going before Lord God Almighty and talking to Him. Prayer is like going to your best friend and sitting across from your best friend just talking, just communicating. We don't need to make this difficult. We don't need to make this. When my dad used to pray in church, he used to pray in church, what we did was we had a church like say like this, time to pray, everybody would get up and kneel in front of their chair and you would pray. And the pastor would be there and he would say, Bob, lead us in prayer. When my dad prayed, my dad prayed and he would use words like thee and thou. He would pray like Old English, like you would read the King James Bible. That's how he would pray. He didn't talk like that at home, but that's how he prayed. And um, the pastor would have known that my dad would have been able to pray like that. But when we pray, we don't need to make this difficult. All we need to do is just go before God, understand who God is, and then talk to God. Talk to God not easy it's not hard i mean it's easy to do that so our posture is not important the place isn't important but the point is is that we're to pray that we are to be praying that's what we're talking about so next week we're going to have part two of the message we're going to take the lord's prayer <laughs> i can't hear what you're saying but it's funny we're going to take the lord's prayer we're going to go line by line we're going to go through the lord's prayer and uh, it, 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 you might want to tell somebody at work or you might want to tell somebody that your family member that Pastor John's going to take the Lord's Prayer and go line by line. And you might want to come out and be part of that because it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And we're going to see really what is in the Lord's Prayer and why it's there and, and why Jesus said that we are to pray this Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Father, Thank you for calling us together here today. It's not by accident that any of us is here today, but it's a divine purpose. We are here for a reason, and only you, O oh God, know the reason, except right now the person that knows why they're here today is beginning to get an idea and understand it. So, Father, I pray that you would take us home safely today. I pray, Father, that... As we go along today and do whatever we do, that you would be with us, help us, guide us, and direct our paths, O oh God. And bring us back here again next week when we can finish up this series, this two-part series, and look at your word and, 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 and see further what Jesus had in mind when he said, pray this way. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray, amen. Okay, before we leave this place, if you guys are able, one more time, if you'll stand with us.
will never ever stay. Kingdom tough, world I'll never give my heart away. Or shout my praise, my allegiance, my devotion, my heart desire, all emotion. Go to serve the man who died upon the tree. Only a God. I bow my knee and say, give my everything. Only a God like you would be worthy of my praise. All my hope and faith to only the King of all kings. Do I bow my knee and say, give my everything. To only my Maker, my Father, my Savior. Redeemer, restore, rebuild, reward. To only Hallelujah. It's all good. God is good and God is great. Just know and just understand that you are loved. As always, I will say this and want it. And you are needed in this place. And, and again, God is building a, a whole lot of homes out back here. And they're going to come and visit us. And I just pray that we're ready. Just get ready. People get ready. There's a song. And maybe next week we'll do that one. But be safe leaving this place. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, don't leave the room. Talk to Pastor John about that decision. Amen, church? Go. To fly, to fly. To fly.